thisfaiththing.com, episode 268. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is trusting in God with all your heart. Faith is knowing that all things are possible with God, that nothing is too difficult for God to do. This faith thing can be easy when we have God on our side. Faith is the word of God. Welcome back for another episode, and I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Friends, we've been taking a look at Joseph as our case study to understand that there are both physical and spiritual pits. Both of them are destructive and damaging to the individual. However, the spiritual pit is worse because they are pits that are not seen. They are not visible to the naked eye. And a lot of times it takes them a long time to be recognized. It can take years. And by that time, the damage would have been done in that person's life because it's a spiritual pit. The biggest question that anyone that is in a pit has is how do they get themselves out of this pit? How is it that when they recognize that they're in a pit and sometimes even before they recognize that they're in a pit, how is it that they get themselves out of it? Let's take a look again at Genesis 39 verse 9. It says, there is no one greater in this house than I, nor has he kept back anything from me but you because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Hmm. Joseph was at the time made overseer of the house of Potiphar and God was no doubt with Joseph, but Pharaoh's wife, for whatever reason, she liked Joseph and she had her eyes on him and she wanted to be with him and she will flaunt and taunt this man, but he would not respond. He did not pay her any attention. And then when we see it in verse eight, it tells us that he refused and simply told her no. He told her no, that he could not do such a great wickedness against God. Friends, he said that this was wickedness, a great wickedness and sin against God. Joseph was in a spiritual pit at this time, and he probably did not know it. He did not see it that way. But nonetheless, he knew that his life was not going the right way. But even though his life was not going the right way, he still knew that despite the way that I'm feeling, despite the pain that I'm in, I cannot sin against God. He said to her, how can I do such great wickedness and sin against God? He didn't even say sin against your husband, Pharaoh. He wasn't even worried about the fact that he could possibly sin against Pharaoh. He was worried about the fact that he was sin against God. It's the same thing in the story of David. When we look at the story of David and we now see him write Psalm 51, he specifically says to God in that Psalm that against thee, thee only have I sinned. The moment that your heart can convict you because you are sinning against God, then you are on the right track, friends. Joseph knew that if he should do anything of such, he would be sinning against God. So friends, the first practical step that I want to share with you on how to get yourself out of a pit, because Joseph, by him doing this, he was working his way, even though he may not have known it, he was working his way out of the pit. You have to stop sinning. Joseph knew that in order to move this life of mine forward, I must not sin against God. Joseph knew that in order to get himself out of that pit, the physical one, the spiritual one, I cannot sin against God. Your mind, your thinking, your actions has to be towards God, friends. It has to be what does my father in heaven want for me? Despite the fact that I don't feel like it, despite the fact that I feel like everything is going against what I want, everything is going contrary to what I thought life would be, I can't sin against God. I want to make God happy. Sinning will put a permanent separation between you and God, friends, and God will not hear your prayers if there's iniquity in your life. God desires to help you, but you have to also play your part when he's trying to help you. And the way that you can do that first is by not sinning. If you continue to read chapter 40, you will find that Joseph, while in prison, he was doing something that most people will not do. Even though we're not in prison, most of us will never do this. He found the courage to help others in their times of need, even though he needed some courage too. He needed someone to boost him up as well. Even though the times that he was facing was hard, he was 
falsely accused of wanting to sleep with the master's wife when that was not the case. He was placed in prison and yet he still found the courage to help other people. If you desire my friends to step out of that pit, if you desire to get your life back on track, if you desire to live a life that God truly intends for you, you need and you must be willing to lend a helping hand. You have to give in order for it to be given back to you, friends. That's how it works. Joseph decided that he would help the butler and baker because he saw that they were sad. He saw that they looked sad. Can you imagine? They're all in prison and he saw that their countenance, their face looked sad and he inquired, what's wrong? And they told him, we have these dreams and we cannot interpret them. And so Joseph helped them out. He helped them to interpret the dreams that they were having and gave them meaning to the dreams that they were having. And meanwhile, they're all in prison and he was still helping them out. He still managed to ask them of their need and he provided solutions for both of them. Those of them that were looking for help, friends. Always give help to others. You never know how your breakthrough comes, friends. Nobody knows how God does his work. God does his work the way it makes sense to him. It doesn't have to make any sense to you. It is in your time of helping others that your help too will come. Try it out. You feel like you're stuck in life. You feel like you're not making any progress. You feel like no one is helping you. Probably because you're not helping anyone else. Begin to lend a helping hand. Begin to assist where you can assist, friends. I'm not saying get taken advantage of. Help people ways that you can and ways that you can. Do what you know that you can do for people. Don't turn your eyes and your ears away from people when you know, when you know that you can do it for them, friends. God desires, God desires that you help people when you are able to help them because it's when you are helping people, when you are lending a helping hand that you also will get your own blessings, friends. That's how God works. That's how the work of God works as well. God desires that you help people at all times. And that is exactly what Joseph did. Friends, and the final tip that I want to share with you, which I'm sure many of us already know, is that you need to live a life of prayer. You must be prayed up, as we say. You must stay prayed up, friends. You must remain in a place of prayer. Because you see, that is where God will begin to reveal things to you. That is how God will begin to show you things that you don't even know. He begins to tell you things that you don't even know. He begins to explain to you things that you don't understand. When you pray to God, he can open up doors for you because you are inviting him into your situation. Never be so discouraged that you don't want to pray. Even in your time of not wanting to pray, pray. Pray even the more at that time. Sing praises to him. Ask him to show you the way. Ask him to open up new things, new ideas to you. Ask him to open up your spiritual eyes as well to see what's going on. You have to be in the loop. You have to understand what God is doing in your life. And the only way that that happens is when you are connected to him in prayer. I'm sure Joseph was praying at some point. It got to a point where he was probably discouraged. Yes, he was dejected, I'm sure. But then it got to a point where, you know what? Feeling like this is not going to get me out of here. And I'm sure it was his prayer, his inside prayer, his Depth, the depth of his heart type of prayer that God was listening to and God was orchestrating how he was going to take Joseph from a prisoner to a prime minister. That is how God works in our lives, friends. The moment that you allow God into the situation, the moment that you tell God that I'm ready for you to enter into this situation, to make moves, to change it for my good, God is going to do it. God is not wicked. God is not wicked at all. He is a faithful father. He desires, he desires to help us all. So my dear friends, if you are in a pit, if you are in a pit, make sure that you stay with prayer at all times. First Thessalonians five seventeen anyway, tells us that we should pray without ceasing. Never stop praying. Prayer will change everything in your life. Everything in your life. Just look at it. Joseph went from a prisoner to a prime minister. And so can you. You may not be in a physical prison, but you may be in the prison of your life. 
And I'm here to tell you that God, only God, friends, only God can take you from that place to a prime minister, to the president of a country. Friends, that is how God works. Friends, I hope that this message of today has blessed you. Go in peace and I will speak with you on the next one. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to This Faith Thing with Adele Aduni. Please head on over to the website at thisfaiththing.com to find the show notes and everything mentioned inside of this podcast. I pray that you have been blessed. Go in peace and I will see you in the next episode. God bless you.